Hello, I am back. This is I in front of a fire with a Buddha and an aloe vera. Uh, okay, today's video is about something that is very close to my heart and you probably already know what that is because it's probably in the title of said video but it's about um, gift giftedness. As you can see, I feel weird talking about giftedness. So what's new with me? I, I am now back in university. I am once again a student and uh, it's going great. I started out this bachelor to become a middle school teacher, but the, the past year and a half, even two years, my growth, my psychological and emotional growth has been exponential. I am changing at such a rapid pace, not necessarily changing, but getting better and better every day with knowing myself, making better decisions and handling the world. That's why I'm once again changing my bachelor's degree to embark on the um, psychology journey. So I want to be a psychologist, always wanted to be one, was too afraid to do it, but um, now I'm going to do it. And the reason why I know is strange, but it is mostly because I discovered giftedness or high functioning potential. I'm just gonna call it giftedness so it's simpler and I don't have to say two names every time I speak about it, which would be a bit annoying. So giftedness is... Okay, so I'm gonna talk a bit about my road towards trying to accept being gifted. If you are a subscriber of mine, you probably know that I was diagnosed in 2017 with ADHD. And there was another component to that report, to that analysis or test, you could say, um, that was about IQ. And I didn't really know what it meant. So I got my report out because I had read that when you're um, in the 98th percentile or more, you're what is called being gifted and there is a whole personality profile that comes with it and very important traits too. So I thought, this is interesting. Is it what my report tells me? And so I looked at my report, got it out. It said 98th percentile looked it up online. So what 98 percentile means is that you're in the 2% of the worldwide population with the highest IQ. That's just what it means. Being the skeptical person that I am, I wondered, well, is this even valid? What does it truly measure? It always says that it's about intelligence, but I didn't like it. I didn't want to feel or believe that I was more intelligent or in any way superior to other people. All in all, IQ seemed to measure cognitive abilities or intellectual abilities. And at first I felt a lot of pride, to be honest. At first I was, as I said, skeptical, but then I felt pride. Um, and I wanted to make sure that this was real, so I sent this report to Mensa organization, which is a high IQ society, and I am now a Menzen, and I'm accepted, and so it's real. Before I talk about my pride, I should talk about my fear of um, telling that, because I've been hiding it from the people around me a lot. Only my boyfriend and my two parents know, uh, which I bet is normal, but when it could come in a conversation, I keep it to myself and I hide it, because there is some shame that comes with it, because of all the stereotypes as to what being gifted means. And so I thought I would shed some light on what being gifted is and what it isn't and what it means to help myself accept the fact that I'm gifted, to maybe help you become better at knowing what giftedness is and accepting these people, and to help maybe you if you're gifted and you're wondering what it all means and etc. I'm very aware that if only 2% of the people are gifted, then this video is addressed to only 2% of the population, right? 
But at the same time, you know, there are lots of videos on Asperger's syndrome and autism and being bipolar or being a psychopath and people find it very interesting and I, I just like to, you know, I just like to put fire on the interest of people towards being gifted. Now, why exactly? Well, the definition of being gifted, I will base it off of two books, these two books right here that I bought and read when I figured out that I was gifted. So the first one is called Your Rainforest Mind. It was written by Paula Prober. So what she does is that she describes gifted people as having rainforests minds. And she uses a metaphor of ecosystems found throughout the world to explain what being gifted is. And I will read you a short passage of the book so that you get what I mean. So she writes, while all ecosystems are beautiful and make valuable contributions to the, world, to the world, rainforests are particularly complex, multi-layered, highly sensitive, colorful, intense, creative, overwhelming and misunderstood, while thick with possibility and pulsing with life, death and transformation. You could say that a rainforest has far more activity than say a meadow or a wheat field, the rainforest is not a better ecosystem, it isn't a better ecosystem, just more complicated. It also makes an essential contribution to the planet when allowed to be itself, rather than when cut down and turned into something that it is not. So to continue with this, what she means is that being gifted is not being better or less, it's about being different and also about having special needs. And that when you're trying to morph the gifted personality into the norm, into something that it isn't, it's a disservice to that ecosystem and so to the whole. What I get from that is that one, you have to understand that distinction that, you know, maybe it says higher IQ, but it doesn't say more value than someone else, which is primordial in this video that that, that is told. And it also says that they have special needs, so that I, I have special needs. And so that brings me to talk about the validity of the IQ test. Um, I read about it a lot, I wondered, is that even true? Like, does it even mean anything? Okay, yeah, I'm in the 98th percentile. I took the, oh, what's the name, W-I-A-S, which is Worsher Intelligent Adult Scale, something like that. <laughs> um, yeah, and I wondered, if it was even valid and so I read many articles and they do say that it is valid but there is some controversy towards it as to does it really measure intelligence does it really measure what it is told to measure and does it even help how could we even use it some people don't believe in higher IQs um, and I think that is a shame okay because when you look at the IQ results the IQ results is like a, a bell it's the IQ bell curve and it was originally created to screen people who would be mentally deficient, who would have difficulties in life, who would be always and constantly dependent or in need of very special help in life and at school. And these people, we know, we accept that they exist, we accept that they have a low IQ and that they have certain needs, um, we accept them as reality and we see them and they're incorporated. Yet, when we go at the other side of the scale, the other side the other 2%, you could say, well, it's like it doesn't exist now. People don't like it, and so it must be invisible and it must be, be untrue. But when you look at that other side and you look at scientists or philosophers who, you know, brought great value to the world, and I don't know them all, but I could just name Einstein and Stephen Hawking, you could say, they have very high IQ. They're definitely in the 0.05%, I don't know, but they're definitely high up in there in the IQ. And when you look at these things, certainly there is something that is valid about IQ. Is it intelligence? I don't believe it is. Um, I believe it's cognitive ability, intellectual ability, rapidity of the traveling of, inf of information in the brain. And I like when they say high potential, because that's what it is. Um, Giftedness is not success. It does not in any way mean you have good grades and be an incredible student and have the best life 
and succeed in life. Not at all. It is a potential. Perhaps you will be able to go further into intellectual activities and maybe you'll be able to make great discoveries because of that high IQ, but it does not mean that you will have that potential met. It does not mean that you will grow enough as a person to actually get there because you have to take into consideration emotional and social intelligence, which is way more of, a, of an indicator of someone's success. It's how they deal with motivation, emotional regulation, it's interpersonal skills and dealing with rejection and difficulty, you know? And so emotional intelligence will be needed with your high IQ to get that, to get to that potential of what you could be. Now, another definition comes from this French book. It's called Trop Intelligent pour être heureux by Jeanne Sio. Obviously, I'm speaking in English right now, so you're probably an English speaker and you probably can't read French. Um, but I'm just going to tell you quickly how she defines being gifted. So she talks about intelligence that is measured for gifted people as not being a difference in quantity of intelligence, but in quality of intelligence, which is, I believe, similar to the description of Paula Prober in, her, in the other book I talked about. Because it's, it's just a more complex, rapid, active, sensitive brain. And she states how important it is to never forget that with hyper-intellectuality comes hyper-sensitivity and hyper-emotionality, which are two things that can make life really difficult. So gifted people, I believe, are more prone to have mood disorders because everything feels, they just feel more deeper, more deeply at all times about many things because of their overactive, overreactive and oversensitive brain. And so it's a difference in quality, not in quantity, which I think is brilliant. And so what I mean, what she means by that, you know, overactive, so let's say here, a, a, a rapid brain. She states here that the information travels more rapidly in gifted brains than in normal brains. What is the word? Neurotypical brains. Uh, so it would explain why it's more rapid and it's also more sensitive. The senses are more alert and so you can have a lot of anxiety and uh, you can be overwhelmed easy easily and I believe it looks a lot like ADHD. So now that I told those two descriptions quite rapidly, I wanted to say something. So yes, I have been diagnosed with ADHD. Now, people would say that when you have giftedness and you have ADHD, it means that you are twice exceptional. Because life can be hard when you have this, those two things, so they make a pretty name for it, right? But yes, they say that you're twice exceptional. The thing is, when you, you know, take into account the fact that the brain is more rapid and more sensitive and uh, very easily stimulated. It can sound a lot like ADHD. And so if you would ask me right now, do you really think you still have ADHD? I would know what to answer because I've been tested for it and they have seen that I have difficulty with my attention and my impulsivity. But is it ADHD or a big trait of my giftedness? I don't know that yet, but um, it's something I'm trying to figure out currently. Um, so all in all, the last thing I want to answer is uh, why is this important to figure out? Why is finding out that I'm gifted important to me? Or why would it be important for another gifted person to figure out that they're gifted? Well, okay, so gifted people have different needs. And that also means that they have different needs in childhood and in school, right, while they're being brought up. I'd have to go personal because I haven't done as much research as I'd like on every gifted child out there to really say gifted child go through that. Okay, so my personal experience is that I've always felt like there was this part of me that I did not in any way understand and that was stifled and quieted and kept down and uh, I always wondered what it was and since I found out that I'm gifted I'm realizing that this hypersensitivity and hyperreactivity and emotionality and uh, this desire to ask really big questions and to explore intellectual subjects and theories and to constantly constantly be learning or thinking or analyzing or I my brain is definitely overactive 
the thing is it wasn't nourished all of my life this need that i had wasn't one acknowledged validated and it wasn't nourished which means that i am not one to regret but i could be in a different place right now i could have had my special needs met i could have had maybe advanced schooling or homeschooling or i i mean i don't really know because it's still new um giftedness is not very new but the importance of giftedness and people trying to help gifted people that's still new so that's one thing now i'm starting to nourish that part of myself and let it out and i understand it better now that it was brought into words in these books and on websites that I've been reading about and it's really helping me a lot. There was also something, I've always had social difficulties. Even in high school I was, you could say, popular. But I felt like these people weren't real. I felt like none of it was real. Um, it was just, and I don't know how to explain it, but I just could never really truly connect with someone or, or feel at home or feel at peace, which was troubling to me. And now I understand it better. If my personality is... It sounds strange, but the thing is, I'm in the 2%, and 2% is not a whole lot, which means that obviously I will have big differences with most people I meet. I am still able to connect with people. I'm still, I mean, obviously I'm human. So I have these same needs as everyone has of love and acceptance and having fun and shit. So I can still connect with people. But there's this whole side of me that is never really validated into my everyday life. Um, hi kittens. Say hi. Meow. 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 Hello. <laughs> Little kitty. So yeah, as much as I do have shame in the sense that I have to hide it because people won't understand it because there are t many stereotypes like oh you think you're better than me or uh, oh this is bullshit I don't know what you're talking about or why is this even important why would you bring it up in this conversation why would you tell us um, there are so many stereotypes that it's very scary to say but the thing is with close people in my life it should be something that's easy to say because it represents me a lot and it's big and I'm quite proud because yes, I'm proud. It's kind of cool to be in Mensa and it's kind of cool to have a high IQ. You know, it, it's some people are, ve you know, are prettier than others and some people are more intelligent or have more intellectual capacities. Some people are way funnier than others. Some people are way kinder. Other people are way more responsible. Others are way more productive. You know, we all have these beautiful qualities that every human has, but some of them will be better than you at it. And that's just okay. It shouldn't, it shouldn't bring out envy or jealousy or hate in people when someone brings out a strength that they have. That's just a bit of wisdom here. <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying that, but I felt it was important. This was just an overview. I just wanted to make a quick video about it because it's what's been going on the past year and a half and why I haven't been posting a lot because I've been going back to school and I've been trying to figure out myself a bit and growing, as I said, exponentially uh, thanks to my therapist and therapy and my overactive brain. And uh, last but not least, I wanted to do some further uh, recommended reading, which are these three books if you're gifted or you want to learn more about what being gifted feels like, you could buy these books. The first one is The Highly Sensitive Person by Elaine, Elaine Aaron. Very, very popular for introverted people. But, um, you know, it deals with high sensitivity. And so I found a lot of myself in that. And then uh, two books by Eric Maisel. I found that guy out because of that book, Why Smart People Hurt. Yes, I did buy that book. They could write different titles, but I shouldn't be ashamed of being smart, right? So... There you go. And uh, it's a guide for the bright, the sensitive, and the creative. And this one is the Van Gogh Blues. So it's the creative person, no, the creative person's path through depression. And so it talks about high emotionality here. And I found a lot of comfort and knowledge in these two books. So I recommend these. Now that's it. I spoke enough for two weeks, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, I will film another video soon and I hope you'll have a great week on that note 
I wish you happiness. I wish you love. <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying this. And see you soon. Okay, bye.